Just a quick note before we start the video, the I don't actually own any Empress Dragoon figures, so I have mercilessly plundered the internet for images of them. None of them are mine. If you are the owner of any of these pictures, then please get in contact so I can give you the credit. There are some absolutely phenomenally painted figures and really nice bits of art out there regarding these you know, elite troopers. So yeah, if you uh, are the owner of any of these, please let me know and I'll give you the credits that you d deserve. If you don't want them in the video, then also please let me know and I'll take them out. Cheers. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are returning to our series on Napoleon's Imperial Guard and this will be the penultimate video. At last we've got to the old guard and I'm going to tease you for a little while longer and make you wait for the infantry. Today we're looking at the heavy cavalry of the guard. So the heavy cavalry of the guard was divided into three different regiments. The Empress Dragoons, the Gendarmes d'Elite and the Grenadier of Cheval. In order to qualify to serve in any of these regiments, a soldier had to be a certain height, a veteran of a number of campaigns and to have been commended for merit. Indeed, many soldiers in the guard heavy cavalry would have been members of the Legion d'Honneur as well. And that's you know, NCOs and even private soldiers. The campaign of 1805 had been peak Napoleon and one of the reasons for his success there was the hard work of his dragoons. As those of you who have seen my video on my favourite units, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of the French Dragoons. Well, Dragoons in general, but French Dragoons in particular. Because it was these guys that would do the unglamorous roles that were vital to an army's success. They would have the reconnaissance, they would do the dismounted patrols, they would search for intelligence, they would question civilians, they would do all the stuff that you needed to do to make an army, to provide an army's intelligence. Now, the Hussars were great at finding the enemy, and reporting back on positions and movements and things like that. But they didn't really like to do the unglamorous grunt work. That's where the Dragoons came in. And to recognise the success and the contribution that the Dragoons added to the army, Napoleon decided to raise a regiment of Guard Dragoons. And another vital part of this, which we talked about it a bit in the Middle Guard video, is that it provided a path of, for advancement for the Dragoons. If you were a Dragoon sergeant, for argument's sake, and you weren't quite ever going to make officer material, there was nowhere for you to go. But with the Guard Dragoons being instigated, then there was a career path for you. So, the regiment was established by Emperor's Decree on the 15th of April, 1806. And we're named, now I'm going to mangle the French here, I apologise. And we're named the Le Dragon de la Imperatrice, after the Empress Josephine, who was what we would call today their honorary colonel. Now, those of you who've just heard my pronunciation there will be glad to hear that I'm going to refer to them as Empress Dragoons for the rest of the video. If you've seen my other videos in the series, particularly the one on the Middle Guard, the method of recruiting troops into the new Guard Dragoon Regiment, familiar. Each of the 30 Dragoon Regiments made a list of six NCOs and six troopers to be candidates for the Guard. For the first wave, the men had to be at least five foot seven, which you know sounds short to us, but it was above average for the time, and had six years' service, having participated in at least two campaigns. The end of that year saw a further call for ten more men from each regiment. Now I'm not sure if they were NCOs, five NCOs, five privates, or what. I couldn't quite find the information on that one. But there were also men accepted from different regiments, usually cavalry. Indeed, several of their commanders came from other cavalry classes entirely, or even infantry. Captain Duvernoy, who was the adjutant major, came from the first chasseurs, so light cavalry there, and the chef d'escadron Jolivet came from the foot grenadiers. It appears that like most of the guard infantry, the Emperor's Dragoons were used as a way to rotate high-flying officers into an elite training formation. So what I want to do at the end of this series is have a discussion about were the guard a net benefit or negative for the French army. I don't really want to go into it here, but I think that's going to be one of the main positives, is that they were used a bit like an informal military training school. So originally, Napoleon had intended to mount the Emperor's Dragoons on black horses, but Bézier, who was the commander of the Guard Cavalry, pointed out that the blacks were designated only for the Grenadiers and the elite gendarmes. Therefore, he instructed the commander of the Dragoons to procure chestnut horses instead. The defeat of Austria and Prussia in the last two years meant that the French had at their disposal some of the best horses in the world. Certainly the best in the class that would be required to mount heavy cavalry. In fact, originally the first two squadrons of the Emperor's Dragoons rode on captured Prussian gendarme horses. The other two squadrons, though, they were still on foot for now. However, 
All dragoons were mounted on French, Prussian or Austrian chestnuts. Although when it comes to painting up the unit, there were also some bays reported as being there as well, if you like to mix up the look of your cavalry unit. I know some of you out there do. In addition to acquiring some of the best horses in the world, with the conquest of Austria and Prussia, they also captured one of the greatest sword-making locations in the world. And later in 1808, they'd capture another one as well. And that was Klingenthal in Lower Saxony. Of course, being the guard, they got the first pick of these absolutely exquisite weapons. And the guard dragoons were armed with a slightly curved sabre, a la Montmorency was the, uh, the design name there. In addition, they would obviously have their usual dragoon accoutrements of pistols and carbines, which, you know, may or may not have been lost or damaged on the way. We'll hear a little bit more about the Empress Dragoons and their relationships with the Saxons later on. The Empress Dragoons numbers rose to 1,269 in 1807 with the addition of two new squadrons. Now, these squadrons were classed as Young Guard. It's something that we'll talk about maybe when we get to the Grenadiers as well, that two of the squadrons were designated Young Guard, and the rest were designated Old Guard. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Presumably, it's, again, for those rotational purposes that someone who didn't quite make the cut of the Old Guard could still get through to that elite unit, do their training, and then rotate back to their original unit. That's that's my assumption. I don't really know. If you know why that was, please leave a note in the comments. I'd be interested to find out. But, uh, yeah, so four of the squadrons counted as Old Guard, two were Young Guard. Now, all the squadrons of the Empress Dragoons wore dark green coats with a white bib. They were sort of a mix between the Line Dragoons and the Grenadier Cheval. And they also wore the Grecian helmet, which was made of beaten copper. Well, I've also heard brass as well, uh, with a black horsehair crest and a red plume as befitting these elite soldiers. The turban, that is the, the sort of animal skin that goes around the base of the helmet just above the peak, was simulated panther skin, although for officers, certainly senior officers, it was probably real panther skin. Musicians rode grey horses and wore light blue coats, which were white for their parade dress. And they had white crests on their helmets. There's a really nice, but I have to say not cheap, kettle drummer from Gringo 40s, that when I finally get around to collecting my Regiment of Empress Dragoons to finish off my Guard Heavy Cavalry Brigade, then I'll definitely be getting him and adding him to the unit. Now, despite them being Guard, the Empress Dragoons were still Dragoons, and they were trained and expected to do the regular dragoony type things that I listed earlier on. But, as with all of his Guard, the Empress Dragoons were used as a tactical reserve by Napoleon, but he was much keener to use his cavalry than he was his Guard infantry. They really came into their own as a fighting unit in 1807, particularly at the Battle of Friedland, a battle which hopefully we'll be doing around about Christmas time, but uh, more on that later. And they also performed very well at Wagram in 1809. They suffered heavy losses at the Battle of the Berezina in 1812, and a previous battle, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. It's something sort of crazily Polish. They participated in the battles of Leipzig and Hanau, but they weren't always super popular with other units. So I said early on that we'd uh, we'd get to their relationships with the Saxons. Well, at Leipzig in 1813, there was friction between Saxon Kraziers, who were regarded as a very, very good heavy cavalry unit for the French army, and the Guard Dragoons. Quote, At about midday, the Saxon Kraziers Brigade was transferred from east of Wachau to the west, from where they witnessed, with no small pleasure, the defeat of Le Tour's Dragoons of the Imperial Guard. This friction between the Allies had been generated by the sustained brutality and licentiousness of the French regiment towards the unfortunate local Saxon population. And there had been several fights between the regiments in bivouac. And that's according to Digby Smith in his 1813 Leipzig book. The Empress Dragoons had a history of being outfought by the Russians, in fact. It wasn't just at Leipzig. On the 24th of September 1812, they'd been badly mauled by two squadrons of the Russian lifeguard dragoons. Again, no uh, no slouches they, but even so. According to Kulankor, it was deemed by the Imperial headquarters that the loss of 250 dragoons was worse than, quote, the loss of 50 generals. Conversely, the high point of the existence of the Empress Dragoons came in the final years of the Empire, when in 1814... At Saint-Dizier, in the battles for France, they captured 18 guns. They, along with a huge part of the French Guard cavalry, were finally destroyed as part of Ney's fateful charge at Waterloo. And although they were restored after the fall of Napoleon, 
They were eventually disbanded in 1814. Rules-wise, the Empress Dragoons have rules in Black Powder already. They're in all the supplements. Uh, and basically, they're just beefed up Dragoons. I think they have an extra hand-to-hand and an extra one to their saving throws. And given that that's basically what they were, I think that's fair enough representation of them. They aren't noted as being particularly better than any of their line companions, but the extra esprit de corps they get from being guard and the better quality of equipment means that, yeah, I think they should probably have slightly improved battlefield performance. Nothing too mental. Uh, I'm <laughs> perhaps a first ever for this channel. I'm going to suggest that they don't get hardened fighters because, uh, yeah, like I say, I think they were just, you know, slightly better than line dragoons. Nothing particularly, uh, particularly incredible. Uh, one of the things that I think they would be better than line dragoons at is because they didn't do so much dragoon duties their horses would have been a lot fresher and their equipment would have been a lot better as well it would have seen a lot less ragtag wear and tear so yeah no i think um i think that's fair enough as we saw at one point the regiment numbered in excess of 1200 men so if we're going to do 1 to 20 that's 60 figures uh, i think that might be a little excessive but i think it could be easily represented by two medium-sized units and I'd be tempted to use that as sort of one big unit, but in two medium-sized ones. The rules for that can be found in Clash of Eagles under the Austrians. I, I'd be tempted to use those rules for the Emperor's Dragoon. I was actually going to do the Guard Heavy Cavalry in one video, but I'm just looking at the time here. And <laughs> I've got a lot to say on the Grenadier Cheval. So I'm going to stop the video here and... I will be uploading the Grenadier Cheval one straight after this one. You won't have to wait for it. But uh, I just didn't want it to be one single huge video on this topic. I wanted to keep these ones slightly smaller. So, thank you very much for listening. Stay tuned. The Grenadier Cheval and the Gendarme d'Elite will be up next.